Today's opening tip, the Spurs Coyote is the 2020 NBA mascot of the year, at least according to the Spurs Twitter account. So, Fizz, how much did you notice the mascots when you were coaching? Well, I try not to pay any attention to them, but there are some things that they do is just so ridiculously funny, man, that you just, <laughs> even if you're trying to be serious as a coach, man, you see it and you just lose it. And some of those guys are super talented, man. They are athletic. They bounce off trampolines. They do a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah, no doubt. Shout out to the Coyote. Shout out to uh, Bernie from the Heat. Yeah, Benny what the about Bull. Benny the Bull, though? Yeah, Come Benny the Bull. I just mentioned them. I just gave him some love. I got, those are like my top three right there. Ramona Schobert hanging out with us. Yeah. Welcome into the jump. I'm George Sedano in for our fearless leader, Rachel Nichols. Today, I'm joined by our resident coach, David Fisdale, and our senior NBA writer and insider, Ramona Shelburne, who you just heard. Coming up, James Harden returned to the court and made a statement with his play over the weekend. We'll react to his 44 points and 17 assists in his season debut and discuss what it means going forward. But first, it's time to play one of our favorite games here on The Jump, right out of the gate, too. Something, <laughs> nothing, or oh. everything. So let's start in Los Angeles. The Clippers lost by 51 points yesterday. I repeat, the Clippers lost by 51 points yesterday. They were without Kawhi Leonard, who was out. Here is Paul George after the game. I take full responsibility. Um, you know, it's a tough game coming from Christmas. Um, you know, I enjoyed my Christmas day. I enjoyed my Christmas day yesterday. Today just popped up on me a little too fast. Um, I'll take full ownership for that, um, of coming out and being prepared to play today. Um, be a different situation come uh, next game, and, uh, you know, we'll be ready. Make sure um, our group will be ready. Okay, so Coach Fizz. Trailing by 50 at halftime, losing by 51 overall. Is that something, <laughs> nothing, or everything? Oh, that's something. You can't just discount losing by 50. I know Coach Lou was digging deep into that bag, trying to pull all his tricks out to get the team riled up and, <laughs> and get them moving. But that, that turkey was sitting on them and all of those fixings and everything. So, you know, I think the good thing about this is Paul George took ownership of it. And he had an opportunity to show that he could lead this team without Kawhi, and he missed that opportunity. He'll probably have it again, but that's why I think it's something, because he has to be able to take this team and carry it for stretches during the season, and that's going to be very important. Look, I, I think it's nothing. I, I, I understand it looks terrible, um, but... I, you know, this is, a, this is the third game of the year. They've looked great so far. They didn't have Kawhi. And, I, you know, when Paul George basically, he just flat out said, look, I enjoyed my Christmas. I enjoyed it a little too much. Okay? It sounded like he got back from, <laughs> back from Denver and had a good time, right? And, and, and to me, it's like, look, you own that. And he, I like that he said I own that. I like that he said we had a little Christmas hangover there. And, and this happens. Like, when you get down real early, th this game was out of hand in the first quarter. I mean, I kept seeing the scores, and I was like, ooh, that looks really bad. And usually, if you close that gap by halftime, there's a chance it's not going to be ugly like that. But, I mean, the second half was even. I don't know. I'm trying to find a bright side for him. I think it's nothing. I think it's just Good a ball race kind of game. Good job, coach. <laughs> I'm going to go in the middle here between you two. I'm going to create a new version. It's, I know it's something, nothing, or everything, but I'm going to go snuffing, yeah. okay? Snuffing. Because it is a little bit of something, and it's kind of a little bit of nothing, okay? Right, right. Because it is the third game of the season, yeah. but my God. You can't be embarrassed like that at home. Right. I don't care you had a Christmas hangover. I don't care how much turkey you had, how much ham you had, how many fixings you had. Listen, there's not enough tryptophan in the world to make you sleepwalk through that game the way they sleptwalk through that. So that is an embarrassing situation. So I'm going to go and create a new category and call it snuffing. <laughs> All right. Next, the Brooklyn Nets suffered their first. Kendrick Perkins here now joining Dominique for this debate. Now, PG said it was just one game, but it was a really, really bad game. Perk, what does this loss say about the Clippers? Well, it says a lot. The Clippers are like that student that, that always used to bring an apple to school for the teacher and sit at the front of the class but could never pass the written test. And here's, here's why. Here's why I say this, all right? I understand you know, in the NBA that you're going to lose games, right? You're going to lose games. But to be down 50 at the half, okay, that's one thing. To score 25 points and be down 50, that's one thing. 
But to not fight back is another thing. I kept watching the second half saying, okay, here go the Clippers. They're going to make a run. They're going to at least cut this to 30. And they didn't make a run. So that goes to show me two things. One, Kawhi just might be the best player in the NBA because if they're going to lose by 50 with him being out, that goes to show me how valuable he really is to the Los Angeles Clippers. Two, that they don't have a leader. And I'm not talking about Ty Lue and the coaching staff. I'm talking about a leader, a vocal leader that's in the locker room, that's on the bench. Not a leader that's going to be talking all the tough guy talk, but it's going to be holding guys accountable and saying, hey, in this five minutes, we about to get stops and we go go on an 8-0 run. The next five minutes, we about to go on another 6-0 run. Let's cut into this league. Let's play possession by possession. They don't have that. And I feel like the Clippers dropped the ball in the offseason by not picking up Rajon Rondo. That was the guy that they needed. They needed a guy like him, a floor general. I love what Pat Bell bring to the table, but he's not that guy. And so what it goes to show me is that the Clippers are the true definition of front runners, not because they lost the game, but because when things get tough and they get down big, they hang their heads and it just almost seems like they give up and not make a push to at least get back in the game and make it a competitive game. And it's a damn shame. Yeah, I mean, to be down 50 points and a half, normally the other team lets off the gas in all sports. If you're down by that much, the other team lets off the gas and you have some personal pride and you fight back and you end up losing by 20 or, or something and then you still get blown out, but everyone's just trying to get out, get healthy. For it to go this bad, I think it is a little bit more concerning, but I agree with what Paul George said. I just wish he hadn't said it. I think he's right. It's just one game. That's a reasonable um, way to take this, and there's plenty of explanations or excuses with um, Kawhi not playing. They had a short offseason. They have a new coaching staff. You're right about them bringing in certain people. I think Luke Kennard and Nicholas Batum may bring some value on the court, but you're right about the mentality off the court. That feels like that was the biggest concern for the Clippers last year in the bubble was it was something mental, some sort of mental block, because it wasn't all for a lack of talent that they weren't able to get past, um, I guess it was Denver in, in, the, um, in the bubble. It was because when they got down, they didn't bounce back. So I think that it's concerning to see that it's repeating itself, but there are normally 82 games in the season. There's 72 this year. This is just one. I don't think that, this, that we can indict the whole team off of one game. The only problem is it's also a continuation off of what we saw from them last year, where they, they struggled Absolutely. because they couldn't quite get their mindset right, and they couldn't quite turn the corner when they needed to. And I thought, I, I disagree with you, though, on the Pat Bev point, is I think Pat Beverly is that guy who normally won't allow you to do that. He is that guy who has that pride and that um, intensity that'll get guys locked in in this moment. But because we know Kawhi's not it, and we know Paul George is not it. Well, well, first of all, Dominic, let me tell you, let me tell you why I disagree to that point. Is because although Pat Bev is a raw, raw type guy, his play still don't shows up and back it up. Not only if you're gonna be a raw, raw type guy and a guy that try to hold people accountable, your play has to back it up. We all know Rondo is a guy that not only is he go, you know, bring guys together and hold guys accountable, but he's also going to elevate his game. It's a reason that you call him playoff Rondo. And to your point is, it's about their mental toughness. What's going to happen in the playoffs again? What if you get down 20? Are you going to have these mental lap laps again where you can't fight back? This is a this is a problem. And like I said, it's it's a long season. Teams are going to lose games. The Lakers are going to lose. The Nets lost last night. But it ain't what you do. It's how you do it. And it's the fashion that they lost. You was down 50, and then you end up losing by 51. So that means in the second half, you didn't come out with the right mindset to say, you know what? We about to go out swinging. We not going to go out like this. I would have accepted it more if they would have went down and been maybe lost by 30 or 25. But it just goes to show that if you get out early on the Los Angeles Clippers, that you got them right where you want it. And then, on top of that, the beef, all the animosity that they had with the Dallas Mavericks throughout their series, you would think that they would come out and fight back, not just get punched in the mouth 
and say, you know what, it's over, I'm going to tap out. No, nah, you got to throw a couple jabs and a couple uppercuts and show you that, hey, I'm ready to swing and ready to battle, but that's where the leadership come in. And Ka Kawhi might oh, my, be the I mean, best my, player in the league if he mean that much. My pushback would normally be in this situation that it's just a regular season game, but the problem is they tried to be a, a hit-the-switch team last year, and they could never hit that switch. So it, to me it sounds like, and I, I don't have the basketball expertise to go out there and say this, but it sounds like what you're saying is they can't win a championship with a team as it's currently constructed because if they weren't mentally tough last year, they didn't bring in the guys to make them any mentally tougher unless you think Ty Lu over the course of the season is going to turn them into some sort of tough guys or mentally strong guys that they weren't at the beginning of the season. It sounds like without some sort of trade or without somebody turning into somebody they can't be, they aren't a real title contender if they, if they aren't any tougher mentally than they were last year. And I'm with that, and, and I agree, and I, I, I actually believe that. Uh, I know you probably was watching a lot of football yesterday because they had football games on, but I actually watched when, when I actually watched the game yesterday. And Ty Lue is a coach that he never shows emotions during the game. He show all his emotions at practice and in film session. And I seen him up and down that sideline trying to get that team going. He's doing his part, but you got to have that on the court. And like Paul George, what you mean we wasn't ready? Like, okay, the first half, y'all got punched in the mouth. Second half, you got to come back and be ready in some standpoint. Yeah. Not to get smoked by yeah. 50. I, would, I, I don't just care wish what he, nobody said. Yeah, I just wish he didn't say it because I think in that situation, and it's, a, it's true across all sports, that intensity matters. I just wish he would have said, like, he didn't say that it's just one game. I wish he would have said, we lost. We got our butts kicked. It's unacceptable. We're going to address that. Like, that's, it's a small thing, but it, to me it shows a different level of accountability than saying, uh, mm -hmm. it happens. It's just one game. He's right about it, but I hate to hear that from the leaders on the team in that, in that type of situation. Yeah, absolutely. There's really no room for them to make excuses after what we saw at the end of this past season. But guys, according to Elias, that 50-point halftime lead by the Mavericks just set records. The prior mark for that halftime lead was when the Warriors had a 47-point lead at halftime over the Kings. And that was in November of 1991. All right, Perk, we only got you for one segment. We wish we had you for longer, but thank you so much for being here. See you soon.